Hey y'all, it is mushroom time in Tennessee, let me tell you. Look at those beautiful buddy babies. I mean, we got a whole wall of beautiful babies. And that's after we picked most of that last night. <clears throat> I never, ever, Samantha picks late at night a lot of times, and I'm never wanting to get the camera out at that point, so I never show you guys the walls. It's, you usually see it on Instagram because my phone is easier to take out. But anyways, <laughs> what's up y'all? Today's video is going to be a quick farm update video. I This was supposed to be an easy thing for me to choose a video to make between two, um, between a how-to and a update video. <coughs> Excuse me, spores are getting to me already. Um, <coughs> so, Patreon, if you support us on Patreon, I put a poll up asking which kind of vi video people would like the next one to be. And wouldn't you believe it, 50, 50 uh, um, and a farm update video and a how-to. So today we're going to do the quick farm update and then the next video I am going to go over pre-packed uh, petri dishes. As in <clears throat> how to dry pack petri dishes, cook them, and that way it is a no agar pour method of dishes. So that will be the next video upcoming. Uh, as far as this video goes, it's going to be a random assortment of updates that uh, I can remember and that we think are valuable to you guys for now. Uh, just know that, just to start off, our switch over to more and more Herisium is going pretty well. We've had <coughs> a couple of hiccups with um, a couple of... Uh, um, well, we, we, the straw bags were not working super well for Herisium, so our yields kind of went down, but the oysters were doing well. We switched back to sawdust, and now we're getting really nice yields again. Uh, our, we had a problem with our pasteurizer, so we did a big push, and then our pasteurizer went down for a few days, and we didn't really notice the cooks weren't quite as nice as before, right, and until we had packed a, a couple of weeks worth of bags, and then we started seeing them in the, grow, the incubation room, and... They did not look good, so of course that cut down on our yields quite a bit as well. But we're back on track. Things are going smooth the past few weeks. We hired someone. Uh, we let them go. We're now at a position where, you know, we it's Samantha and I again, uh, it's just Samantha and I and the kids. So you know, orders are coming out a little slower than normal, and the phone is not getting answered quite as often. So just so you know. We're not ignoring you guys, we're just, we're, I mean, this is the weekend, this, today is Sunday. Uh, yesterday we took out, we cleaned the grow room and, and took out and replaced blocks on the wall because this last week we had a mentorship. So mentorship and no employees means that we are behind. <clears throat> that said, got something cool for you guys. Um, we actually have a sponsor for this video who is not me, weird, I know. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'll bring that up here in just a little bit. We'll, we'll get familiar and intimate with our sponsor. Not intimate, familiar and intimated. There we go. And uh, But the cool thing is, right back there and behind the fog where you can't see, is a new variety that we're releasing today. It's called Deep Blue Sea. It is a, a strain that is an offspring from uh, crossing Rocky Top with our mother of pearl. And it has an incredible blue color. Um, from the pen set, which comes out just a, a really, really dark blue. And then, of course, the mature mushroom, which is what we're all really concerned with, is coming out a very beautiful powder blue. Um, the, the, the really mature mushrooms that we've had are even fading somewhat with a darker stripe along the edge. Uh, and we're kind of reminiscent of Cool Touch, which this is related to Cool Touch. So uh, interesting to see that gene kind of, or that phenotype come back out. Um, but if you guys are, are interested in I've got some, hopefully some nice B-roll playing over while I'm talking to you. And uh, you guys can go to the website. Link should be below <clears throat> if you want to check that strain out. Uh, we don't have a lot of data on it yet, so I don't know what its full temperature range is. I know that's kicking butt right now uh, for me, and things are pretty warm right now with cool nights. And our yields on it are pretty good, but I don't have like commercial data yet to release for it. So uh, that said, it's just such a, a bright, beautiful blue. I know this strain is going to be a favorite for a lot of people. Um, <clears throat> that said, 
What else do we have updated wise? Oh, the, well, hmm. We just, I guess we'll figure it out, right? Hey, all right. So one of the updates that I've got for us <clears throat> is that we are, these are oat hull pellets. We're getting these from Mushroom Media Online. Uh, we were getting our straw pellets from Mushroom Media Online as well, but where we noticed the herisium didn't do as well on the straw, we switched back to sawdust that we're getting now from Tractor Supply, just because it's it's cheaper for me where it's local, and I don't have to pay the shipping. That said, the oat hulls, oh my goodness, they are really doing well. And I mean, you can see there, I've got some uh, video I can show you of the lion's beard mushrooms growing on sawdust and oat hulls. You can come through if you need to. Um, it's everything is doing really really well we have cut our recipe down a little bit um, you don't have to uh, <laughs> um, we've cut our recipe on the supplement side down so we're now at about uh, a 65 35 split 65 percent hardwood 35 percent oat holes um, recipe is working out really well for us uh, soy prices have gone up for me, and the oat holes are, are cheaper, uh, even with the shipping. And uh, for those of you, you know, who are growing organic, these are labeled organic, and can be grown um, <clears throat> as you know, so your mushrooms can be labeled organic as well. I don't really care so much about that, but I know a lot of people do. So if that's something you're into, you've got that choice right there. So another cool thing that we're really getting to work on right now is uh, Ben is uh, back at Man of War full time, which means that he is you know right next to us, next door, right across from that wall, or right on the other side of that wall uh, from us. And infrastructure is going back up faster. So not only did we get like a cool st new uh, steamer um, boiler for our, our uh, atmospheric past pasteurizer. Thor is getting some cool upgrades. Um, there is a new edition of Thor about to be put out. So watch for that kind of stuff. That's all going to be coming out through Mushroom Media Online as well. So check those um, those guys out and be on the lookout for the new Thor and the Thor upgrades. It's some cool stuff. Fastest mushroom bagger on the market, hands down. Don't care what anyone else says. And uh, <laughs> of course, completely untested and unproven. Uh, I'd like to see a side-by-side -side, uh, test because, uh, you know, I'm confident. That said, we're getting some cool infrastructure in. We haven't got the, the ceiling in just yet. This is the next thing, or maybe the next wall and then the ceiling. But you can see that wall back there is now insulated. My incubation space is no longer a bivouac. It's no longer just a tent put up for the world, right? Uh, just to, to barely take the edge off. I'm actually getting incubated, uh, or uh, insulated incubation space, which, oh my God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that could have really used that last summer and the fact that we're getting that when it's still not hot outside is really really taking a lot of the uh, weight off my shoulders if you know what I mean just to be able to actually have insulated space with an HRV returning some of that energy back into incubation and keeping fresh air in here going all the time I don't really get out of breath in incubation because we have an HRV right up here that is constantly replacing the fresh air and returning a lot of that energy back to the great hole and then bringing it back through here so infrastructure 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 if you are a mushroom farmer i am sure you already know this infrastructure is the sexiest thing out in the world it is just mwah, so beautiful well while we've got a second and the day is closing down <clears throat> and i still have to edit this video let's talk about today's sponsor it might be coffee related. Now today's sponsor is Cactus Hat Mushrooms actually. Cactus Hat makes an amazing lion's mane coffee. It is a coffee with lion's mane mushrooms in it. It's something like 50-50 mix of roasted lion's mane with roasted coffee beans. I will tell you, I can drink it without creamer. I prefer it still with creamer just because I'm a big dairy guy, love dairy. But, oh my goodness, it makes the coffee taste silky smooth. And so far, out of all the mushroom coffees I've tried, I freaking hate mud water. That stuff gives me indigestion like crazy. Um, 
everything else I've tried has just not tasted that good. And his coffee actually tastes really good. It doesn't taste too fungal, and it tastes like coffee, just a little creamier. Code Mossy is live for 5% off your order. So you go to Cactus Hat Mushrooms, go to their website, stock up on your coffee, use code Mossy, and that gets you 5% off your total order. Um, it is well, well worth it, guys. Man, it is windier out here than I meant for it to be. Or when I, than, I, than I thought I <laughs> meant for it to be. Like, I got any control over it. Um, he doesn't just do coffees. He does, like, a, a, a Lion's Mane Hot Cocoa. He does some rubs that I've been using on the, the uh, for steak rubs and things like that. Uh, there's a lot of cool stuff that he's got going on, but by far my favorite is the coffee. Um, it, it is, you know, I just use it in my French press. You put your coffee in, you pour it out. Man, and it even, like, you can just, you can smell it. It just smells so good. So, uh, my favorite brand coffee right now is Cactus Hat Mushrooms. Check it out. And uh, get you some. Back to the your regular viewing pleasure. Oh yeah, one of the things I meant to talk about while I was out there. You guys probably saw the RV in the back. Samantha and I are wanting to start traveling. We're wanting to start visiting a lot of our mentored farms and other farms that we can find. So of course, you know, if you have any interest of uh, hosting us or anything like that and having us go through and do a YouTube video on, on your farm, we would love to be able to do that. Um, we've got a few routes that we're going to try first. This first summer is going to be much closer to home, and then we'll expand out as we go. But uh, we're not just doing that. We've built a small miniature lab that uh, can be packed away in the bottom of the RV so that uh, as I'm out and about places, I can clone wild mushrooms while we're going on hikes or kayaking trips or camping or boondocking or even Walmart parking lots overnight stays or whatever we want to do. So. Um, it's going to be exciting. Very much so. <laughs> <coughs> so, uh, again, just, just contact us. Um, it'd be cool to go see you guys. Florida is a trip I'm planning on taking very, very soon as it's in the southeast and I want to go take my kids to see a rocket launch. And I know a bunch of mushroom farms in Florida right now, so. Oh my god, that coffee's so good, it's almost like I know the guy. Alright, so I'm not going to stay in this room long. I know that this room's got a lot of noise that I have to compete with. But, just wanted to uh, stop in here and just say that we've got a lot of cool stuff going on. I've got a lot of experiments going on. Right above your head is a ton of breeding experiments. Um, I have, now that we've switched over to largely doing a lot of heresiums, I now have um, a series of crosses that I'm doing with uh, Herisium. It took me a while to really learn how to get good clean spore prints off Herisium. It was not a super easy thing for me to figure out how to do, though it turned out to have one of the stupid, simplest, stupid simple solutions that I've ever come up with. Um, just le elevate it. Anyways, the whole point is that I've got a bunch of cross, like Lion's Beard is one of the first things I started crossing. So we have those first set of strains in grain spawn going to trial right now. The first ones just got packed into freeing blocks and then we have the rest of the series um, going faster and faster. And in fact, uh, something that I've been doing is I've switched over in spawn bags. Largely we're going to these two pound bags. Um, the reason, unless, I'm, it's, unless it's commercial production, there's something like uh, block clients have ordered and yes, I'm getting a lot of block clients these days. If people are ordering blocks, then obviously I go with a five pound box just so I can save on uh, the uh, labor. But I'm able to, to go down to my experimental strains. Mopor series, this is Mother of Pearl, crossed with Old Road. Um, and we're able to take these strains and just do you know a few bags at a time. So what this means is I'm gonna be able to start doing a lot more experimentation as we go on. As a part of this, I am doing the initial testing for every strain, but in the Discord group, uh, I am in the beginning stages of recruiting some of my more experienced Discord members and trying to build uh, a couple of different networks 
So we're trying to pick someone from the, the northwest, the southwest, southeast, northeast, and then of course us here kind of in the central part of the United States. Um, and we are all testing the same strain at the same time. Um, there's some responsibilities that are associated with that, but there's also getting to test and play with some cool things before anybody else is able to get their hands on it. Uh, and we're, right now we're building the first network, and then hopefully I'm wanting to build two or three different networks of people you know, in the same areas so that I can test three or four strains on a commercial scale at a time across the country, have that data reported back, photos reported back, and then offer that up on the website for you guys. Um, but it all starts right here with the, the initial testing, and we're just going to basically grain masters to do our initial testing. That's why I'm able to get a whole shelf going um, of different experimental lines. And uh, my lab was, Samantha did have it all, uh, somebody called it Marie Kondo. I don't actually know who Marie Kondo is, but apparently she's an organizational expert. But uh, now that I've been back in the lab every day, I've kind of ruined all of Samantha's nice hard work um, and disorganized it quite a bit. So while it is chaotic a mess, there's a lot of opportunity coming out of this chaotic mess. And then, as far as liquid culture goes, um, I haven't gotten to experiment much more with my aerated liquid culture. I've had a lot of people asking about it. Uh, I do know some people have started taking off and running with it, and some people have started doing even commercial trials with it, and seem to be having a good bit of a success. Uh, I would like to get back into it, but until I get some employees, some of my experimentation has had to take a, a step back while I'm doing the more day-to-day -day operations. So. Uh, hopefully those will come back and I'll get you guys some more videos on, on that and whatnot. But uh, hopefully some people will start posting their, their works on uh, Instagram and uh, YouTube and whatnot. Uh, so you guys can see some of that as well. So I highly recommend if you've been playing around with the aerated liquid culture, please share some of your results with people. People are very, very interested in it. Oh, so here's something that's a little bit exciting. Talking about the breeding trials. So right here. Oh. Here, here, this one. Yep, okay. That's, shut up. Um, <laughs> this one and this one. See, oh, okay, I can do it now. There we go. Just had to re reorient myself. Uh, says LBBH. That's lion's beard and bear's head. Um, I did these on plate, which is abnormal for me, but uh, for the score crossing, and I will say that I am very, very positive that lion's beard and bear's head crossed. Which is beginning to make me think that the bear's head that we're all growing is not Hericium americanum. Either, either, well, one of two things. Either Hericiums interspeciate really easily, or the bear's head is not what it, we think it is. And it's just a bear's head, a lion's mane strain called bear's head. And there's, there's precedence for this. Um, there's the elm oyster, right? The, the species elm oyster. And then there's the elm A and elm Z elm oysters, which are the commercial elm oysters, which are not true elm oysters, but rather tree oysters, Pleurotus austriatus, that is named the elm oyster because of its elm-like qualities. So I'm not sure which one yet. Um, I'm about to send the bear's head strain off, along with my entire Herisium collection, off to, uh, well, hopefully soon, Everyman Bio is going to DNA uh, barcode them all for me so that we can check species. And uh, then once we get those all speciated, that'll help my breeding program a little bit right there, just knowing what is and is not lion's mane and what is and is not Coralloides and Americanum, et cetera, et cetera. So that's some pretty cool stuff going on. Um, that's all in the future though, so we will see. For now, these crosses are here and going into production blocks, and I cannot wait to see what Hericium does. Um, I have not heard of very many people breeding very many strains of it, so especially doing, at, doing out crosses. So, we'll see. So I figured I'd step back in here real quick just to show you guys about the next video. These right here are the new plates that I'm going with. Actually, one of the, the mentorships that came in, one of the mentees, came in and told me about these. This is what I'm talking about, like why I love teaching people how to grow mushrooms. The mentorship program is not just good for people who want to come or send their employees to learn. Uh, like last week's was the, 
a farm up in Canada, literally sent one of their employees down here to learn so they can set up their, their side of the mushroom op. But every single one of these guys ends up making me better as well. So, you know, I might share 10, 15, 100 things with them, but that one thing they showed me just made me a better grower and made me a better teacher. So, and speaking of, wild anoki just harvested out in the heat of the day. And, oh, 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 here we go. Wild golden oyster. Wild golden oyster from about a mile down from the shop. So who knows, uh, someone said whether or not it's feral or wild. Don't really know, but it's genetics we don't have. And it's either naturalized out here or is wild out here. I put a, a thing up on iNaturalist about it, plan on having a DNA barcoded and then throwing that up as well. But uh, so cool. Just got it to liquid culture. Hopefully uh, by the time the video comes out about these plates, Hopefully I will have um, it fruiting in the grow room. We'll see. But that's what next the next video is going to be about. I'm going to try to have that. Actually, the, the gold will not be growing, so we'll try to have that out by next week. We're going to go over dry packing. Um, it's kind of like how I, I do slants now, um, where we add all the materials together and then, and then cook it by the, the plate. It makes life so much easier. Plus, it's pretty much eliminated my usage of parafilm. So... We'll get into that next, um, but uh, yeah, it's a lot of spore print, uh, spore print taking time. Oh, and check this out. Man, I don't know if you can see it well. That is uh, what uh, I heard somebody call a peptone pancake. When you add peptone to your liquid culture and it gets those scobies on top, these... Uh, these floaters like that when I emptied the jar I just decided to go ahead and throw that mycelial puck in a bag it's growing in really nicely so uh, you don't know if you got something you want to if you want to do something with your leftover mycelial pucks uh, you can call it puck spawn and just throw it in your uh, grain bags and we'll see how it goes all right so here we are back outside and we're out front right now Super windy, about to storm, so we'll make this as quick as possible. Um, it's the mushroom delivery van. So, this right here is something Samantha's trying to do. Oh, I'm about to lose some at my feet. Um, this is all spent mushroom blocks. Some of it's been treated through, like, uh, you know, worm vermicomposting. Uh, some of it is just. Um, dried leftover kind of mulch layers on top and uh, we've got some flowers and uh, that's a volunteer pumpkin I think that, that's kind of growing up in it and then we're trying it in the leftover super sacks as well and what we've done is we put them on pallets uh, we're planning on making more as well but we're, we put them on pallets hoping that um, right now they're under cover and they're protected a lot from what had been the frost and the cooler. Tennessee's get, Tennessee gets really, really warm and then cold and then warm and then cold. So we put them back here to kind of protect them from those cold spells. Um, now they're getting really good sun where they're at. Uh, I can move them out further into the parking lot with the forklift and get them more sun. And then when it comes time to like a high summer, like when we got our tomato, like we got tomatoes uh, planted and some, you know, cucumbers and stuff. Um, what we'll hopefully be able to do is take them, um, for instance, and put them out towards the fence row and let them grow out there. Um, and then whenever it becomes too hot, uh, around August, September, and the tomatoes stop producing, I'll be able to move them back here where they're at and they'll be shaded for the hottest part of the day. And they'll get hours of morning sun and then as the day heats up, they will be in the shade and we'll hopefully be able to cool them off, water hose, maybe a misting system here for our comfort and theirs. But my plan is to hopefully have a mobile garden that I can move around the parking lot with the forklift to keep plants going. I, mean, I don't even need the forklift. I guess I can just get the pallet jack and move them around by hand, but whatever. It's as wide as it is long, I guess, on that. Um, hey, anybody need a couple of uh, free couches? So we just toss them out. And for now, guys, that's that's pretty much it. I mean, I've got more updates. Um, we've got updates on, you know, the insect farms that we're doing. 
So far, my favorite is the red wrigglers, the red worms, mushroom compost, kitchen scraps, and all that stuff fed to red worms has just been my favorite, easiest to care for, most productive. Uh, mealworms are great. Um, and I think it's great for people that want to ship in a bunch of mealworms, grow them out, and then basically have a finished product from that, right? But as far as people like doing a whole breeding system and everything on top of mushrooms on anything else that they're doing, no, I think it's better just go to somewhere like Fluker's Farms and order in a bunch of small millworms, small superworms, grow them out to their full size, then, you know, on mushroom substrate, let them eat that stuff down, dry them out, sell them for chicken feed, that kind of stuff. Uh, we're doing some chickens right now. We've got rabbits, quail. Um, so far, I think the quail are our favorite. Uh, ducks, which, I mean, okay, so duck eggs are like my favorite, but um, Samantha and I were talking and we think we may start selling off some of the chickens and the, not rabbits, uh, the ducks and stick with the rabbits and the quail because they really, they require almost no time to take care of them whatsoever every day. Um, the chickens and the ducks require more and even though the chickens will eat more different things than the quail will, um, I just, I think I prefer, I just prefer having simpler things in my life, it's things that are simple to take care of and easy to take care of. Um, and speaking of, I mean, look at this lion's beard. Holy cow, I just, it just keeps going. All that lion's beard. Um, we got all these other things too, including that deep blue sea. That is just phenomenal. By the way, something that you guys may not know, that deep blue sea is actually one of the mushroom strains that was bred by Jackie Crawford when he was working for me. So we just called Jackie up and we're like, dude, you gotta come get a cluster. Like this stuff, or Samantha did, I guess. But this stuff is beautiful and he picked he, he did a good cross right there, so he picked a couple of his favorites, the, the Mother of Pearl and the Rocky Top, and this something I tried to encourage him to do uh, when he wasn't too busy, um, and I'm liking the cross. It's it's a, it's a phenomenal cross. It's a, right up there with BS26. is one of my favorites for color, so um, <clears throat> with that, y'all, things are going really well with us. Um, we're getting booked up on mentorships, which I love. I'm also a little scared about because I'm a little short-handed, <laughs> but so far, Samantha and I have been able to manage quite well. I'm really impressed with the, the quality of mentorships we've had the last few months. Um, I mean, we've been having, we've always been really lucky, but man, we're getting some really good quality people through, so um, it really excites me. And guys, the mushroom market is getting frothy. I'm going to be doing a video uh, where I'm going to do a breakdown of what I have seen changes in the past 10 years on of the mushroom world um, and guys things are radically different I said early on that I wanted 2023 to be the year of the mushroom the mushroom farmer guys it's happening like this mushrooms are blowing up and it's uh it's a fad when I was when I first got into this it was a fad that it's a fad that's had more staying power than any fad I've ever seen um, I think mushrooms are just naturalizing into Americans diet and um, becoming a bit more commonplace so Right now is a really good time, I feel like, to be sharpening your skills, honing your skills, practicing at home, get your Martha Grows going. I don't care how early you are on the process, it's not too late to start getting into it. Um, and even if you do it just as a hobby to provide yourselves with some uh, some good nourishing food for you and your family, it's a, it's a worthwhile hobby. So the, the marketplace is maturing in a good way. So, um, and beyond that, oh, I've got some videos coming up on recipes. Uh, if you haven't checked out Mossy Creek Mushrooms Instagram, do so. We just did a, a, a reel that we released. I think that's what it's called on Instagram. I'm a grandpa when it comes to that stuff. Um, of marinated mushrooms just on the grill. King Blue marinates so well. I marinated them for like five minutes, and it made the mushrooms so heavy the clusters wouldn't hardly stay together. And I just threw them on the grill and cooked them until they were nice and crispy and brown. And it was, it just chopped up and thrown in a bowl of rice. Phenomenal. So I'm gonna do a recipe video on that. Uh, I wanna do some reaction videos. In fact, I wanna see if I can get Josiah from Extraterrestrial to come down and do some reaction videos with us on some stuff. And uh, I'm working on getting a space together to get the podcast going again. So I appreciate all of you guys who've asked about the podcast, wanting that back. I do plan on bringing that back. 
I have no promises as to when because I have to build the space to, to do it well. So uh, that said, y'all, I uh, really appreciate all the patience you guys have shown us, all the excitement you guys have shown us, all the strains you guys are buying, so the financial support that you've shown us. Um, if you want to vote on videos um, or uh, get into the Discord and start joining the, the testing group for the, the strain testing or whatnot, um, hit us up on Patreon. And um, yeah, y'all, this it's a great time to be a mushroom farmer. Keep spawning culture, y'all. Never know what to say. Always so much anxiety in the beginning of a video.